All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this Committee. I want to welcome my uh, colleagues who are members of the Committee. Uh, today present, we have Council Members Gibson, Barron, Constantinides, Deutsch, Kuhl, Lansman, Richards, Torres, Traeger, Chair Adams, D and Diaz. Today, we will be voting on five applications referred out of our subcommittees. We will vote to approve LUs 208, the Lefferts Bo uh, Boulevard rezoning for property located in Chair Adams District in Queens. This application for a zoning map amendment would facilitate a new commercial development. A C2-3 commercial overlay district would be established within an existing R4-1 district. This rezoning would extend the current C2-3 overlay district along Lefferts Boulevard from a depth of 100 feet from Liberty Avenue to, to a line 500 feet north of 107th Avenue. We will also vote to approve LUs 216, the 180 Myrtle Avenue tax amendment submitted by Red Apple Real Estate regarding ground floors, use regulations within the special downtown Brooklyn district. The proposed zoning text would allow all non-residential uses permitted by the underlying zone district within the required special ground floor uses for buildings from fronting on Myrtle Avenue between Ashland Place and Fleet Place in Majority Leader Cumbles District in Brooklyn. We will, vote to, we will vote to approve LUs 223, 224, and 225 related to property at 95 Lenox Avenue in Central Harlem section of Manhattan in Councilmember Perkins District. The project known as Cannon Four Towers is a Section 8 building comprised of 161 dwellings, units on 11 floors with two elevators. It was built in 1981 and was granted an exemption under Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law as part of the plan and project, which will expire in 2021. The building's Section 8 contract is currently set to expire in 2033. For LUs 223, HPD seeks approval of pursuant to Section 115 of the Private Housing Finance Law, the modification of the plan and project for Cannon Four Towers by removing from the plan and project Block 1824, Lot 155, currently containing a parking lot and open space. Lot 16, which contains the existing Section 8 building, will remain in the plan and project until it expires. For LUs 224, HPD seeks approval of a conveyance of the parking lot and open space for the current owner to a new owner. The new owner will develop the conveyance area with two new buildings. One will be 40% income restricted and 60% market rate. This building is expected to contain approximately 288 dwelling units, assuming a future rezoning. The other will be 100% income restricted Ella building, potentially containing approximately 209 dwelling units if a portion of lot 155 is combined with adjacent HPD owned lots. The third action I'll use 225 is for approval of pursuant to section 1234 of the private housing finance law, the voluntary dissolution of the current owners of the existing section 8 building. This will be accompanied by approval of the new tax exemption for the buildings pursuant to article 577 Section 577 of Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. Councilmember Perkins is supportive of these applications. And before we vote, I would like to congratulate Councilmember Perkins for achieving an outcome that I see as a win for the residents of the existing buildings in the city. Not only are we preserving the affordability for the residents in the existing buildings and improving the living conditions, but also through these applications, we are creating affordable housing opportunities in Council Member Perkins District with deeper affordability than originally proposed. With these applications, we will preserve 160 affordable housing units pending a rezoning, have a new 6040 building instead of a fully market rate building. Furthermore, thanks to, thanks to council members' efforts to increase affordability, the new 6040 building would include a 50% AMI tier in addition to a 100% affordable Ella building. We will also vote to approve LUs 219, the Landmarks Preservation Commission designation of the Borum Hills Historic District Extension and Council Member Levin's District in Brooklyn. The extensions consist of approximately 280 buildings developed in the mid 19th century. According to LPC designation report, the, extension the extensions are an important commercial corridor adjacent to the Borum Hill Historic District and contains rows of buildings designed in the Greek Revival, Italianate, and other 19th century styles. These buildings were constructed for the working and middle class as the growth of commerce, industry, and transportation drove development in Brooklyn around the Civil War. 
we will, we will vote to approve LU220, an application submitted by the Administration for Children's Services and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services pursuant to Section 197-C of the, of the New York City Charter for the acquisition of property located at 888 Westchester Avenue for continued use as a child care facility. The LSSNY Early Life Child Center 2 in my district in the Bronx has been operating since the early 1970s in a privately owned one-story building, and it serves up to 135 three- to four-year-olds. I would like to also recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Perkins and Gradenchik, uh, and also by uh, Councilmember Reynoso. Now, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Councilmember yes. Barron. Question. I just want a little bit of clarity. The staff did come and uh, give me some information, but I have another question regarding uh, LU223. Three, four, and five. It says the development team will convey a portion of lot 155, parentheses, conditioned on a successful future rezoning and successful disposition of city owned lots. How are we going to ensure that that happens? Because that's where the Ella is. So anytime I see conditional, anytime I see, you know, contingent upon, I'm concerned. So the other part of the development, which is at 60% market and 40% affordable, is supposedly going to give this Ella project, but it says conditioned on. So how do we ensure that that's going to happen? Give us a second, we'll get okay. your information. I just saw it, I would have asked the staff before. And is there a way that that could have been uh, tied into this so that it would happen? So it's my understanding that the Ella project are going to be a city on lot, HBD on lot. So that's why any uh, future rezonings, they can guarantee that it will be affordable because it's city owned lots. So because it's city owned, we'll be guaranteed that that, I'm just concerned about the language. That's the, that's the commitment that the council member uh, agreed to with HPD. That's why that language is there. So any future rezonings that occurs there, because it is city owned lot, we can hold them. We can hold them to, to, uh, to their word on it. And, uh, and, and that's what the council member has negotiated. So we have that in writing that you, you are bound to make sure that this Ella project comes into being. So, council member, I've been informed that there will be another project and they will get that in writing. Okay, thank you. Okay. Council member Perkins, is there anything you want to speak about your projects? Uh, per se, I have a statement. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so, I, uh, <clears throat> I write this letter to support the tax exemption at block 1824, lot 16, AKA 95 Lennox Avenue a 160-unit Section 8 building. The modification of the plan and project and conveyance approval for Block 1824, Lot 155 to l and Development Partners. I support the redevelopment plans as represented in the attached commitment letter, which aims to, one, preserve 160 units of Section 8 affordable housing at Canaan 4. Number two, develop a mixed-income 288-unit building with 10% of the unit's income restricted at 50% of the AMI, 10% of the units at 90% of AMI, and 20% of the units at 130% AMI. Develop a 200-unit affordable building with 20% of the units at 80% AMI, 20% of units at 70% AMI, 20% of units at 50% AMI, 20% of units at 40% AMI, 10% of units at 30% AMI, and 10% of units set aside for formerly homeless families. As part of this development effort, l and and HPD will submit a follow-up application to rezone lots 16, 19, 21, and 155, as well as disposition approval for city-owned lots 19, 20, and 21. Although I would like to see deeper affordability in the entire development, I recognize the efforts of those who have come to the table to provide and preserve housing in my district. I therefore give my support to this development effort, including the three items currently before the council. 
its convenience. Modification of the previous plan and project article uh, 11 tax exemption on lot 16, as well as the future rezoning and disposition of city owned property for lots 19, 20, and 21. Therefore, I support these efforts that will preserve Section 8 housing, create 100% income restricted building with Ella term sheet, and ensure that Harlem continues to be a neighborhood where people of diverse incomes and backgrounds can thrive. Sincerely, Bill Perkins. Thank you, Councilman Perkins. Um, any other comments or questions from members of the committee? All right, seeing none, I will now call a vote in accordance with recommendations of the subcommittees and the local council members to approve LUs 208, 216, 219, 220, 223, 224, and 225. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye on all. Gibson. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all with the understanding that L&M, the developer, has given a commitment letter that they will in fact follow through with the uh, construction of the Ella project. Thank you. Konstantinidis. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on Kuh. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Diaz. Aye. My vote of 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and annual staff for attending today's hearing. I will leave the roll open for 15 minutes. Thank you. What? Yeah.